How to set up WordPress mail SMTP with Gmail. In this video, we're going to be talking about WordPress mail SMTP and how you are going to be setting it up with Gmail for fixed failed emails for good. Okay. So to start things off, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you are straight into your WordPress store. Okay. And while you're in your WordPress store, you're going to want to make sure that everything in your WordPress is set it up and you at least have the creator plan, as you can see in my case over here. So obviously your site's email deliverability issues need to be fixed by setting up WP mail. Okay. And Gmail's email deliverability is probably the biggest and most common issue that WordPress users faced on a day to day basis. Now this includes important emails, either ending up in a user spam folder or not being delivered at all. So the best way to fix those issues is to authenticate your site's email using SMTP and selecting a specific mailer option to help you deliver your emails reliably each and every time without further ado. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to come over to the plugins section. And once you are in the plugin section, what you're going to do over here is you're going to write WP mail. Okay. So once you have written WP mail, you're going to search it up. And what happens is you're going to get WP mail by SMTP. Okay. So once you get this, you're going to click on install and activate. And as you can see, it starts setting up your plugin. So once the plugin is successfully installed, what it does is it gives you the main repertoire dashboard and how your WP mail actually works and functions. So let me just wait for this to get installed and we're going to get straight into the individualities of its features and how you're going to set up your Gmail with it. Now, once your plugin is successfully installed, it's going to let you know that your site is more powerful than ever now. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to back off over here and here you have your WP mail SMTP. Okay. So once you come over to the WP mail SMTP, it's going to load things up over here. Now, after installing the WP mail plugin, what you are going to be doing from here is you're going to verify your license key. Okay. So your license key is going to be pasted over here. Okay. And uh, if you have a license key, what you're going to do is you can unlock more features. Okay. So once you have done that for yourself, what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down to the from email section. Okay. So your from email is going to appear over here and you will also see a force from email checkbox that you can select. Okay. So you can go, uh, you can go ahead with force from email. You can turn it on and it says if checked the from email setting above will be used for all emails, ignoring values set by other plugins. Okay. So this is a box that you can activate for yourself as well. And if you'd like to make it so all emails sent from your site will come from the email address specified above over here. Okay. Then you have the from name field where you can add any from name. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and add in my own name. Okay. Now, once we do this, what this does is all emails will come from this name and you can obviously turn on force from name as well, which will apply to all site emails. Okay. Now, once you scroll down here, you come to the mailer section, you can see all the available emails. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on Google Gmail. So once you do this below, a Gmail section will appear, which will contain two fields, client ID and client secret. Okay. So in order to get these two pieces of information, you will need to open a new tab or log in to your Google account or cloud console. So for that, we're going to come here and we're going to search up Google cloud console. Okay. Once you search that up, you are going to go over to your cloud console like this. Okay. And you're going to make sure to sign in with the same email that you want to send emails on your WordPress. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my accounts. Okay. And I'm going to switch it to the email that I want to sign in through this. Okay. Now, once you do that here, it brings you to your cloud. So on the cloud console section, what you're first of all going to do is you're going to make sure to activate your account. Now, once you do that, you're going to click on activate. And as you can see, our account was successfully activated over here. So once this is done, you can start off your first project. Now, my first project is over here. 
And once your first project is good to go and start it off, you can go ahead and click on the existing project over here. So once you click on the existing project, it will take you through the drop down menu and it gives you different quick access menus over here as well. So these are different things that you're going to want to keep an idea of. Now to, you know, get better working, I'm going to go ahead and create a new project for you guys. So once you click on new project, let's say I'm going to call this WP mail. Okay. That is what I'm going to call it. Then you're going to choose your organization. Okay. You can choose it as you want. I'm going to go with the no parent organization and click on continue. And once you click on continue, as you can see, it starts creating your WP mail. So once your WP mail is successfully created from there, what you're going to want to do is you're going to select this project. And now that we're in the selection of this project, what you're going to do is you're going to go to API and services. So once you go to the API and services section, what you can do from here is you're going to search up your Gmail API. And we're simply going to wait for this section to load up over here. So as this section has loaded up, you're going to go over to your API library. And in your API library, you're going to write in Gmail API. Once you do that, you're going to search that in. And as you can see, you're going to come over to the Gmail API right in front of you. So once you come here, you're going to click on enable. And what this does is it enables the API for your Gmail. And once that is done, it's going to open up a whole dashboard for you. So once that dashboard is opened up, obviously you can try that API in different ways, you know, however you want to. And you can also get different credential types for yourself. Okay. So once this API is active, you're going to go over to its credentials because that is where we're going to want to go. And once you are in the credential section, you're going to make sure to select the proper configuring API for yourself. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on create credentials. And once you click on create credentials, what you're going to want to do is you're going to click on API key. Now, once you click on API key, it starts creating things in for you. So as we can see, we have our API key set it up over here. Then moving on, you can also go ahead and choose different things like service account or authorized ID, etc. And in some cases, it might ask you for the app name and uh, the proper, you know, consent screen. But uh, we're simply going to go over to this you are going to make sure to configure your consent screen as well because in the consent screen it might ask you what is your user type is it internal is it external etc so you're going to want to make sure to go ahead with these basic details because the consent screen you get is you know mainly you could say uh, about your connection so in our case obviously our application is wordpress so i'm going to go with internal because I don't really feel like uh, I have to, you know, do a proper verification, but if you want to go with external, you could do that as well. Now it asks you for things like your app name and supported email. Okay. These, this is basic information, which you're going to obviously have to enter. So I'm going to add the necessary details. In my case, it's WP mail SMTP. Then you're going to add your user supported email, which I'm going to add over here. Then we have different things like app domain, etc., and developer contact information. Now, this is again a very important bit. You're going to make sure to add in an email. I'm just going to add in my email over here. And once you go ahead and do that, what you can do is you're going to click on save and continue. And this basically saves your consent screen. Then comes the scope section, which I'm pretty much going to skip because we don't really need to go ahead with it. Same goes with test users. And once you have done that, this basically verifies your app registration. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of all of that. So now we have our consent screen set it up. So what you can do from there is you can automatically go over to your credentials and you can have the proper credentials created for the authorized client ID. So we we're going to come over here. We're going to go with web application. Now, the name is obviously dependent on what you verify it as. Okay, so I'm going to stay on web client one. Then it also goes for authorized JavaScript origins, authorized redirect URLs. You can add these sections for yourself if you want to. 
but this is something that you're going to want to get from WordPress. Okay, this is really important. So what you're going to do is you're going to come here. Now it says authorized redirect URL. We're going to go ahead and copy this and we're going to come to add URL and we're going to paste this. Okay, now I'm going to click on add URL over here. And as you can see, the main setting that needs to be added over here, you have added it. And once you've done this, you're going to click on create. Now, once you click on create, as you can see, authorized, uh, you can say client is now created. And now we have a proper web client. Now, what you can do is you're going to go ahead to download your credentials. And here is where you get the main section for these. So you have client ID, which I'm going to copy up and I'm going to bring over here. We're going to paste it. Then we also have a client secret. So I'm going to come here, paste it up. And now we have the client ID and client secret set up. Okay. Now, once you have added this, you're not going to save your settings yet. Okay. What you are going to do is you're going to close all of this. You can go to authorize consent screen and you're going to make sure that the publishing status is that it is published. So I'm going to go over to publish app. Okay. I'm going to click on push to production. And as you can see, it starts bringing you into the production section. So if you go over to credentials, you can also see over here that you're going to have all your necessary client IDs like this one over here. This is the one we created. And again, you can go ahead and edit the authorization for this as you please. So all this information on the right hand side, you're going to want to, you know, properly copy it. You can also get the client secret and whatnot. So once you have again, copy this you're going to come here i'm just going to go through it all again just to show you what to do so paste it and then you're going to copy the client secret come here paste it so once we have done that now what you're going to do is you're going to click on save settings and so once we click on save settings it brings us here where it says these settings have successfully saved so once you have done that what you can do from there is you can authorize things. So it says allow plugin to send emails using your account. So I'm going to go with this. And once we click on that, this will basically authorize things in. you're going to choose the account. So I'm going to choose the actual account that I want to verify it with. So once we have chosen the account, what happens is it brings us here. So if you're using a free Gmail account, this is a screen that may show up where it says, you know, it's not verified. Now, don't be alarmed if this appears as this only happens because Google hasn't verified your app and there isn't a need to verify it because you just created this app for your own use. OK, now if this happens. Click on the advanced section. OK, and in the bottom left corner, it says go to the WP mail setup dot com. So once we do that, as you can see, you are coming straight ahead into this section. So once we've done that, we're going to click on continue. And here we go. We have successfully gone ahead and set up our WP mail SMTP with our Gmail in the easiest and most simplest way. And now our fixed mail is good to go. So that is pretty much how you're going to set up WP mail SMTP with your Gmail. Now, if you enjoyed this video, drop down a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll be seeing all of you wonderful people in the next video. Have a great day. Goodbye.